Okay, my YouTube people. Here we are back with the Ironhead Sportster. You can see I still haven't washed it. Nice coating of dust on it from when I picked it up. But I did get a chance to take off the saddlebags and that back tour pack thing and the along with that tank bag. And it just looks a whole lot better now. I'm much happier with it. It looks more like a hot rod. Uh, I am going to end up changing the uh, bars on it. I don't really care for those. Something a little narrower, a little higher is my thought. We'll have to look into that. But today's video is replacement of the O-rings for the intake manifold. And I'm going to install a CV carb. I just happen to have a few of those carbs and they run uh, really good on any motorcycle. And they run good on sportsters and uh, shovels also. So let's see how that's done. So in order to get this manifold on to the motorcycle, this takes the rubber band style, not the O-rings like the early bikes did. You can see the band and the second band. And these just go on here like this, pretty simple. I decided to change these because I had extra ones of these. They, If you buy a James kit that comes with both style, and I used a lot of the O-ring style ones, and I had plenty of bands, plus they were looking pretty worn. So uh, they were dried and cracked. Decided it was time for these. I'm sure you've seen in my other videos, I like to use the O-ring lubricant. This will swell rubber a little bit and keep it soft and pliable. So I always put a little thin coating of this on. Also helps them seal if they're just a hair softer. I have these style clamps. These are the best ones I've found. Like this. They're a little more expensive, but I found it really worked good. And lastly, to get the manifold to adapt up to a CV carb, I bought this piece. I believe I got this on eBay. I've had it for a while. And it just bolts on there like that. And then you go to the CV carb. I did have to drill and tap these out to 5 16 18. And then the CV carb pushes right on into here. And I'll show you that as we go forward. Like I said, I just take a little bit of this and kind of work it around in here. Nothing complicated about this. And it's very light film. You don't need much of this. And there's the second one. So I haven't done these in a while and I believe I can just do something like this and slip it on. And there you have it. Now I'll disassemble the clamps. So I guess I'm going to try it like this since it went on so simple without them. Now you just tighten the clamps up and we'll see how it looks. So I have them snugged up a little bit and one thing I like to do is I just like to give the manifold a little wobble and then try and put it in the middle of that and then I tighten it up the rest of the way. Then once I think I have it where I want it, just give it a little wobble, make sure it's not loose or anything and it's not don't really want to over tighten it you don't want to under tighten it either and that seems to be pretty good so the next thing I'm going to do is I have the James gasket I have the manifold and I have the rubber gasket that sits like this that the carburetor slides into and I will put some of that o-ring lubricant on this in here but first these manifold bolts they slip in from the back and then get tightened in. Now you'll notice that the manifold is smaller diameter because 
the CV carb is a smaller throat than the S and S carb. But it's not an issue going this way. It'll still go in and be just fine. And then it just screws on like this. And now the bottom. Alright, got that good and snugged up. On this carb, I have this choke cable, and you buy a slider lid that has this piece on it. They also sell a piece that bolts on that you don't have to change your stock lid. It kind of has a bracket that goes to these two, and it'll hold that choke also. First, I'll put a little of the O-ring grease here and give you an idea of what it's going to look like. That's what it'll look like. Now I just have to route the cables there, which is closer than they were. And this will turn a little and be out of the way. But I'm going to go with a taller set of bars, I believe. So I'll need that extra cable to get to the new bars. And once this mounts up, it'll look something like that. I'm going to have to do something with this. It's a little discolored, but it'll look like that. So if you look at these two throttle cables, the pull cable is thinner down here and the return cable is thicker. But on the CV carb, these are both the same size. So I had to take a screwdriver and open this up a little bit. And now it fits in there perfect. I contemplating getting rid of it all together because the older bikes don't have a return cable, but it was a simple workaround. So this is a rough mock-up at this point. You can see somebody drilled a bunch of holes all in here and I'm going to have to get those closed up. And um, this is, like I said, a mock-up, but you'd be a fool not to put Loctite on any screws that could come vibrating loose and go into the intake manifold. Then after that, it's the air filter. And then the air filter cover. You can see it doesn't stick out too far. And now I just need to connect this bracket to the back of the air filter, which it pretty much looks like it's there, and connect it up. And then it'll be supported, and that's how I'm going to do it. So I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe, and uh, check out some of my other videos, and have a great day.